So often we look at a landscape, whether it's a forest or a meadow, and we see flora and fauna, trees and birds, flowers and insects, amphibians and fungi. It's only natural that we humans do so because we live in the middle zone, that place between sky and earth called the understory, which is the place that life in the macroscopic world often comes together, intermixes and meets the forces of the elements such as the power of thunderstorms and the clear lights of a summer's day. And it is so easy to get lost in the grandeur and beauty of this macroscopic world. But there is another place all around us, under our feet and in the air itself and in the trees overhead and even in the clear flowing water of brooks. It is a place without which none of the life that we see could be possible. It is the foundation, the microscopic world. And we might think of it as a strange alien world filled with its own bizarre creatures of unusual shapes and characteristics far more mysterious than these fungi growing out of a rotting log. But these creatures are as native to Earth as you and I, and while they could live without us, we could not live without them. And to have any hope of understanding the life on this planet and how its complexity ultimately emerges into intelligent superorganisms such as forests, we must begin with the microbial world, for they are the foundation. It's not hard to find the microbial world. It's really all around us. The problem is that for we humans, it is so tiny that without special equipment, we can easily overlook it. Here, I've captured a bit of it. In my kitchen, I espied an orange developing a bit of mold. I took a thin sliver from that orange and placed it in a Petri dish with a half centimeter of distilled water around it. Covered the Petri dish and placed it in a cool shadowed place where the mold could flourish and grow. And grow it did. In two days, the mold had come to entirely cover the orange, and not only the orange, but its juices, sugars in particular from the orange's pulp seeped into the surrounding water. The mold spread the threads of its hair-like body into the water, filling it so thoroughly that the water became more like a gel. And while we as humans might look at mold upon food and think it's disgusting, there is a hidden symmetry and beauty and deep color within the mold's endless twisting turns and passages. Let's take a look. For here, in this simple mold, we will see a model for what goes on in a healthy soil, in a forest, in a meadow, an interweaving of microbiology, absolutely essential to the survival of everything on the microscopic scale. Due to the placement of my Fuji X-T3 camera on a customized adapter that I cobbled together, we are working at unusual scales. But here, we are observing that orange at about 150 magnification. In microscopic terms, this is not very high, but the symmetrical beauty of the growth of the fungus is already readily apparent. We see thousands upon thousands of tube-like structures emerging from the edge of the orange. Those are hyphae, those are the actual body of a fungus. Whether that fungus is a delicious chanerelle or oyster mushroom, or the mold growing upon a bed, these hyphae are its actual structure. The part that people think of as a mushroom, that's only the fruiting body, like the apple on an apple tree. There are single cellular fungi such as yeast, but that's a topic for later. Let us change the color narrative, so to speak, and look at these hyphae through a different light. It is amazing how when viewed above, it looks like a metropolis, doesn't it? A fungal city growing in microscopic scale on the surface of an orange. And in some ways, that's a good analog. Just like people living anywhere, the hyphae go out into the world and seek their fortune and carry their treasures back home. In the case of hyphae, they are seeking food and optimal growing conditions. Here, see the little ovals growing off the edges of those hyphae? Those are its spores, just like us. When the fungus finds food and good living conditions, it produces young. And for fungi, those young come in the form of single-celled spores, kind of like the seed of a fungus. In the space between the particles of soil and the molecules of water, so small that not even the best microscope can detail them, we find more spores of the fungi, just waiting for the conditions where it is right to grow. And between them, far smaller organisms, bacteria, 
You can see these active little creatures vibrating, flitting, and moving about in little circles between the spores. The bacteria support the ecosystem by consuming and breaking down nutrients, thus reducing nutrients in the soil to molecular levels that all the other organisms that share the microscopic world can utilize. This makes these tiny creatures much like the herbivores of the microscopic world, essential to a vast yet tiny ecosystem so small that we cannot pick it up even though it is going on all around us every day, moment to moment. In the earth of meadows and woods, and in garden soil, and in your very own yards, you will find countless earthworms. Fishermen and gardeners appreciate them immensely. But when we dive far, far deeper to the world of Microscopia, we discover that there are countless more worms. Tiny worms called nematodes. There are all kinds of nematodes. The one portrayed here appears to be grazing upon this tiny fleck of algal growth. Other nematodes feed on other microbes. There are nematodes that feed on plants and fungi, and even nematodes that prey on nematodes. These wriggly little organisms are astoundingly abundant, and there are at least 57 billion of them for every human being on the face of this earth. They play key roles in ecology, accounting for up to 0.13% of soil respiration and serve a tremendously important role in breaking down soil nutrients and making them available to plants and larger animal organisms. We will certainly take a deeper look at nematodes later. But within the realm of the microstory, there are far, far stranger organisms still. This one is one of my favorites, known by various names, the moss piglet, the water bear. It is a microscopic animal, a herbivore in fact, and one might think of it like a chubby little eight-legged vole. It is the tardigrade, and it is, in fact, a multicellular animal complete with a little brain, eyes, digestive tract, legs, and claws. And yet, for all that, it is microscopic. The one you see here is so tiny it could not be seen with the naked eye. And whenever you walk through a forest with algae and fungi growing around you, or pass by a pond with some green growth in it, Chances are, there are billions upon billions in there. The twists, turns, and tales of the microstory are all around us, ever-present and busy, though often out of sight and out of mind. But this microscopic realm lays the foundation for all the macroscopic life we find so familiar. Bacteria free nutrients in the soil. The hyphae of fungi mine those nutrients, use them, and transport them to their plant partners and entire dramas of predator and prey and the works of ecosystems play out in a droplet of water, the ponds beside us, and the spaces smaller than the dots above an eye in virtually every crook and cranny on the face of this earth from hundreds of meters below ground to thousands of meters above us in the sky. In upcoming episodes, we will be taking a closer look at this foundational world, for without it, we cannot survive. And the creatures of meadow and forest, whether plant or animal, that we have studied so closely owe their existence to these tiny organisms often overlooked. But understanding them is key to appreciating the overarching tale of life in the understory. Thank you for coming along on this voyage of discovery into the microstory. The MicroStory program is part of the Understory Network, a group of channels devoted to providing education on the science of the natural world. On our MicroStory channel, you can find all of our programs related to all things microscopic. On the Understory channel, we study animals, plants, and fungi, as well as issues related to conservation. And on the SkyStory channel, we explore the world of astronomy and that of astrophotography. Our programs are made possible by our many viewers, patrons, and students. And we owe all of you a profound thanks. And if you like what you see here, please take a moment to like and subscribe.